The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, let's take a look here at the German DAX. But before we do that, we're going to have Norm, who calls it to the minute. Winsky will be on at uh, 930, as usual, from Astro Trend down there in beautiful Naples, Florida. And now we'll move on to the DAX. You'll notice that we made a new high up there and then reversed a little bit. Folks, the reason why that chart is important is because the gentleman that sends that to me each morning is an expert tape reader. He watches the markets, how they uh, attack certain support and resistance points. And if they don't go through, he immediately will put an order in, knowing that there's not a lot of buy stops there. And then uh, it gives him a very, very low risk entry point. Now, if it goes through there and really blasts through like we did in some of these other things like the bonds and a few of the others, then uh, that's totally different. You can't do that. But if it just gets above those levels and doesn't do anything, that just means that the, uh, uh, you know, the market just hit that area and then it turned around. Also, folks, I've had questions about stops that uh, you know these markets should go to those stops believe me they're not looking for your stops on 100 shares of uh, Procter and Gamble or something like that that just doesn't happen it just happens to be the normal flutter of the market if you're going to get filled there stops are placed for protection you should use them because if you don't use a stop you're telling the market that I know more than you and we know how that ends. So just make sure that you have to protect yourself. Now, you, you, some people can do this, and I, I do this myself sometimes, is you don't have to have a stop in the market itself. You can have a desktop, but boy, you have to have uh, the discipline to execute that desktop um, because if you don't, you're going to be trapped in these things. And then you're in the situation where you're going to be wishing you were in a market or out of a market instead of being in so you got to be really careful there if you're going to use a desktop new traders should never do that in my opinion but experienced people that have read the tape and and what i mean by reading the tape is watch how markets move around highs and lows you know where see if there's any buying or selling there because if there's buying the market's going to go through there very very quickly and uh you know that's uh, really what you're what you're trying to do if you're interested more about that the really good book for it is Reminiscences of a Stock Operator by Edwin Lefevre, written uh, many, many years ago, 60, 70 years ago. I've read that book 50 times, but he talks about that, you know, that uh, you see these prices and they go up there and there's just no buying there. If you remember that, uh, the, um, let's just do that right now since we're talking about that. Let's just look at that uh, dollar index, if you'll recall, is it right here. You'll be able to see the same situation. This is when the euro was down there, trading down at the uh, one 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 twelve level. You notice the 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 if you look at it really closely, you see that sixty one percent retracement. But if you go to the left of that just a little bit, where you'll you'll see it hit it three times. We went above it, and what did we do? We went above it by one tick, and then the market reversed. That told you pretty much that there was not much buying there. There was no buy stops. No one was afraid of that. In contrast, go back and look at, uh, you know, the period of 2014 when the market took out those highs at the 8250 level. It went straight up. And also when it made its final high where you see the head of the head and shoulders pattern, you see how it blasted through those old highs? That's what you're looking for. So uh, you don't have to, you're not going to get the high tech. You forget about that. But at least you'll know that there's not a lot of buy orders or sell orders at that point. So that's the key, you know, to looking at this from a, um, you know, using stop placement. So I hope that helps. It's a hard lesson for me to learn, but by golly, it's uh, it's been okay. Let's talk about the uh, the gold market. Oh, no, we have a question this morning about the Bitcoin. If you'll bear with me, we want to answer all of the questions that we get, if you hold on here, we'll put this up here. You'll see here that we have um, Bitcoin has held those levels. We're still 
really haven't gone anywhere. We really need to get above 4,300, and then we could ha head up to, you know, 8,500. But you know, I don't think we're going to see a runaway thing to 19,000 in this right away. But you know, that's neither. That's my guess, and believe me, I'm I'm very good at guessing. So let's pay attention to that. If you have an interest in the Bitcoin, I, f I follow it each week. Never trade it, but follow it. That's basically it. David White is telling us that the um, Deutsche Bank is up 3% today. They're in negotiation with Commerce Bank. That's like, that's like uh, two arsonists being handed gasoline because Commerce Bank is only selling for about $7 a share. And uh, Deutsche Bank is about $8 a share. But they both need help. Hopefully they'll put it together and there'll be enough band-aids in the room, you know, so the, the stocks will go okay. But Deutsche Bank has got some real serious problems, folks, uh, and that, that's a key thing to remember. You know, folks, if, if, you, if you don't remember anything about what we do here at TFNN, especially on my show, I want you to remember one thing, and I want to, this is so important because <laughs> this, is a, this is a rule that you never want to forget. Hold on one second, and I'll get it up here, because every time I look at this Deutsche Bank chart, I have to laugh because I just uh, I thought it was uh, incredibly funny, and we'll get it up here so we can see it. If we go back to January two years ago, let's get this up here. They had a post-Christmas Day present for all of the people in Deutsche Bank. It came out right at the uh, end of January, and they were going to offer you Deutsche Bank stock for a 35% discount. Wasn't that nice? It's 20. They gave you a 35% discount, so you're going to buy that thing at what? Uh, six and fourteen, and uh, you look at it. We went through there like it didn't even exist. Watch, look at the left-hand side where the high was in March, folks. Look at the high in January. You see how it just went above it by about twenty cents or even less in a twenty-dollar stock. And then look what happened. You see, there was that perfect example there where there were nothing. There was nothing there at that point. So that's uh, that's a key thing to uh, to remember. But anyway, that's uh, the lesson. When it looks like it's too good to be true, you can bet your last penny that it is too good to be true. So pay attention to that. We're trading around 888 right now. Everybody in China will be buying that stock because 888's the magical numbers in China. So uh, it's held. We've had a few higher bottoms now in uh, Deutsche Bank. So we could easily get a rally up to 12 or a 13 without any trouble at all. That'd be nothing more than a 382 retracement, much like what we saw in uh, General Electric. So like I always, my grandma used to say when she used to feed me the oatmeal in the morning when I was sitting in my high chair, she said, Sonny, she said, remember to find the easy ones. The tough ones are around everywhere. Try to find the easy ones. And that's what we're trying to do here at TFNN. We're going to have a little break coming up in a minute. And a few minutes after that, at the half hour, we'll have Norm Winsky in to talk to us about uh, some of the markets that he's looking at. When we get back from the break, and when we get back from the break, we want to cover uh, two markets that are very interesting this morning. One is the gold, and the second one is the euro. We'll start out with the gold when we get up here after this break. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, folks, we're back and we're taking a look at the gold market. And here again is an example of stop placement. If you'll notice, the high on the day in gold in the April gold on Friday was 1305.80, and the high today was 1306.10, 30 cents in a contract that's worth $130,000. I told you there was not a whole lot of buying there. That buying might come in a little bit later. But it didn't come in at yesterday's highs. So that means something. I mean, there was nothing there. One of the reasons why, well, it was the main reason why I went to Chicago to uh, trade on the floor of the exchange in April of 1982 was the fact that I wanted to see that these stops were actually really uh, placed so that you were fair and that, you know, they weren't showing people where the stops were. And, folks, I was there two and a half years, and I didn't see anything that was uh, hanky-panky. If it happened, I didn't see it, but I was watching for it all the time. Byron Tucker showed me a few instances of a few games that were being played, but those decks that those brokers held were worth a lot of money, and if they flashed what stops were, they had the the danger of losing that desk, uh, deck, and that was worth a, you know, a couple million dollars. So that's a lot different now with electronic trading, but it's certainly because of electronic trading, I'm sure there's ways of seeing whether uh, you can do something like that but your stops are there for protection you know that's really what they're there for and it's protect them from yourself folks and that's the that's the most important uh, the most important thing at all but as long as gold can stay uh, below that 1308 level and I say that because if we get above that then we're approaching above the 78 percent level of that previous swing breaking through that takes you up to that ABCD structure at 1315, uh, still substantially below the high at 1351. So we're, we're still working through some bear market dynamics here, and that would be a major Gartley pattern if we got that up there around that 13, 15, 13, 17, if we, if we do that. But uh, we don't know if that's going to happen yet, but nobody else does either. That's the good part. So, all right, let's move on here to the next one we want to cover. Now, folks, um, Mr. Z is asking me, when did I start at Drexel Burnham Lombard? I started there in August of 1976, right after the the big uh, crop report. Uh, I had taken two months off to enjoy some a little bit of R&R, &R and uh, uh, Drexel contacted me and wanted me to be a broker. I said I had no idea that I wanted to be a broker, but 
as they say in the Godfather, they made me an offer I couldn't refuse. And that's it. I started at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. I bought a seat at the IMM. I didn't buy a full CME seat because they were 250 and IMM seat was 110 and uh, that's what I that's what I did. Actually, I bought Jack Waldock's seat from Lynn Waldock. Uh, he was a hog farmer over in uh, in Ohio, and uh, he owned the firm with he and Barry Lind. And uh, since I did so much business with Barry Lind during my time at Drexel in in the meets, uh, Barry treated me very very nicely. We lost Barry a couple years ago in Palm Springs, California. Uh, he was there uh, helping his his son open a restaurant. And um, he was helping a, a woman that was stranded on the on the road there, uh, uh, Palm Desert Highway, and uh, he was helping her change a tire. And he was hit by a drunk driver uh, from uh, you know, illegal from Mexico, and uh, he was killed instantly. And very young, he was. Uh, I think he was. Well, he was my age. So he was. See, that was. That was. About, but he's about seventy-five, about three, four years ago. Anyway, great guy. Anyway, that's what I did. I stayed there until. Uh, July of '85, I was there two, uh, three years, and then I went to work at Drex, uh, at Commodity Corporation in Princeton, New Jersey, and then I stayed there for a while, and a couple years, and then I uh, went out on my own. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Let's take a look at one. That, this is going to be a real interesting one today. Well, they're all interesting, but this is uh, really on the uh, on the watch list today. Here is the the crude oil market, because we're we're reaching up here to some really strong support here, folks. But let's try that again. Resistance. Look what's happened since January. We see that the big ABCD move down into January. Remember that uh, 43 was a 61 percent retracement coming off of $30 a barrel. So that was major, major support there. Uh, you'll notice that we rallied pretty strongly from 42 all the way up to 46. And then we went sideways for two weeks. And then we came out of that consolidation area and away it went. But look where we are now. You see that area? Remember, this is a four-hour chart. So it takes uh, six of these bars to make a, uh, eight of these bars to make a, six times four. 24, yeah, six of these bars to make a uh, a day. So we've been up here for a couple days here at this area of 5,900. So here's a perfect example today is if you if you get above 5,900 and you don't go blasting through, that could be the completion of that 1.27 expansion. But if you go through there quickly, you know, you could easily get to 6,100 because there's another ABCD structure setting in that way, and it hasn't shown any signs of backing off, off as of yet. So watch that one. That's going to be that's on my watch list for today. So we'll just you know see what's going on with that. Now we had another question about one of the Fang stocks. They asked which was the most bullish of all the Fang stocks. And folks, I think you'll be able to see it here. It is by far uh, Google. Google has been the one that is the most uh, bullish here. You'll see that we're almost at the 78% level with the market strong today. We could easily get there at uh, 12. Well, that's only up about 30 bucks. We could easily get there at 12.10 in Google, but that's the strongest. The weakest of the FANG stocks, hands down, without any trouble at all, is the book. Facebook is the one that is by far the weakest. In fact, it gapped down Friday and didn't do anything, and it's down again today, too. So uh, this stock has got a lot of trouble if it gets below 160. But we're trading around 166 this morning. But if we get below 160 in um, um, Facebook, then it's got some real serious problems. So we'll see. Uh, the question about is uh, Mr. Z is asking about Softy. Microsoft, is it ever going to top out? Let's take a quick look here at Softy for uh, Mr. Z and see what we've got here. This M is with the Mickey Mouse. They kept the, the New York Stock Exchange kept uh, M open on the uh, – on their letters, you know, single letters for Microsoft all those years, and Bill Gates never left NASDAQ. So anyway, let's take a look here. It's uh, actually, oh, the, hey, there's a good one here. Here's here's a real interesting one. Very good, Mr. Z. Another, another lesson to be learned. Hold on one second. Here's that situation again where you notice we made a double top from October at the 116 level. We've taken that out, and it never went anywhere. Did, didn't even go a dollar higher, folks. So watch Softy here because uh, it's trading at 116.10. 
The high yesterday was 117.58. So, you know, if you're interested in, uh, you know, selling Microsoft and, you know, if you, if you read the tape, then that's one of those things. There was no buying there at the at that new level. So that also happened to be a 1.618 expansion of the move from uh, February down into early March. So there's a possibility there that that could be a double top in Microsoft. I'm not saying that it is, but I'm just saying it's a possibility. One thing you know is that once it went above 116.70, which was the high way back in October, it never went anywhere. In fact, it's below that right now. So I don't know, we'll see. Hey, we got Norm Winsky coming up in about Four minutes, 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, evidently, technical problems are keeping us from reaching Norm Winsky, so we're going to move on here and talk about uh, soybeans here. I put up a long-term monthly chart here going back over the last 20 years. You can see we've had some incredible moves here, like in 2003, 2008, and in 2012. Uh, you can see that there was a three-drive to a top pattern. But look where we are now, folks. We are setting at the 78% level of the low from 2006. Uh, it's made a beautiful uh, uh, butterfly bottom. And we've been, this is a monthly chart, now we've been higher now 
for eight months in a row. It hasn't moved down considering all the problems we've had with China and the tariffs. That's a possibility of a very, very strong formation. The one thing that we've got going uh, here in the soybeans and in the corn and wheat is that it is universally bearish. Uh, with that crop report that we had last week, it tells us that we've got enough grain to last us through the next millennial, which is usually three weeks when the weather gets really hot. But, uh, you know, they're saying that there's just nothing out there and the demand could be weakening if the China tariffs don't go through. So all I'm saying is keep an eye on this because if that El Nino current comes in, uh, it can cause havoc with the crop and you could lose 20, 30 percent. We've never really had a crop failure in these things, folks, we've come close a few times, but we we haven't had one. And if we do, and if we do, uh, then when you're looking at some really, really serious, uh, really, really serious things uh, to look at. You're right, Mr. Bill. Uh, Microsoft did complete that nice little ABCD up at that double top. So that's another reason to possibly take a look at it. Uh, but the fact that it took out that high at 116.78 in October you know, by 20 cents and didn't go anywhere. I mean, you're talking about a, a very, very popular stock that didn't do too much. So we'll see, you know, what's going on uh, with these things. But anyway, those are the ones that we're really uh, sort of watching really closely. Remember uh, last week we were talking about the, I wanted to get one of the futures up. We have a questions for one of our futures traders, which we have a lot of them there in the room. But we were looking at the uh, we were looking at the wheat, and we what we did is we because the market was cascading down so much, what we decided to do was to go in and see what was happening with wheat. And as you can see, from the 20th of February into the 1st of March, down to the 12th of March. Now this is a four-hour chart, excuse me, hourly chart. So you've got uh, four days, uh, what six? Yeah, I'll tell you one, two, three, four, six days in between each of the highs and lows. You see the low made there on the 20th the 3rd of March, and again on the 12th of March. That's an A, B, C, D down. You can see the symmetry there, and that tells you where you're going. One of the, one of the tricks for finding a three-drive pattern is if you have to force it, in other words, you have to think whether it's a three-drive pattern or not, it's not a three-drive pattern. It's got to be very, very symmetrical. That's the real key. Now, we came in today with the market trading at around the 460 level, I believe around 458 right now. The ideal situation here in May wheat is if we could get a nice uh, three-day correction, 18th, 19th, 20th of March, 20th of March is the full moon that we have coming in. And the following day we have the these uh, equinox, we got the spring equinox coming in. So this could be very interesting. The spring equinox was very, very important. This was featured on clay tablets from Samaria wheat traders and Babylonian wheat traders that was highlighted in Dr. Andrews Lowe's book, The Evolution of Technical Analysis. In the first 50 pages, he talked about the first technicians were astrologers. And, uh, you know, whether that was true or not, I don't know. But when you're looking at these charts and you're looking at a bar chart, the only thing you're watching is the sum total of all the buying and all the selling. If there's more buyers, prices are going up. If there's more sellers, prices are going down. That's the whole thing to watch. Now, let's, since we're talking about wheat here, I think it's worthy to get up to see the long-term picture in the wheat here because you'll be able to see here in the long-term picture, you can see the big A, B, C, D coming down. And then we've highlighted that full moon where it says March the 20th. And then it's also the first day of spring is the following day. And uh, that's another one that looks pretty interesting. You'll notice that the uh, if you go back into December of last year, you can see the market making an A, B, C, D pattern uh, at the uh, – uh, $5.44 a bushel level. We then dropped $1.20 a bushel into that ABCD structure that we just hit. How much more of a rally? We're going to know, but the ideal setup is to, we've had a really nice three-day rally coming off the bottom. Now, if we could get the market to come down into the full moon with just maybe a 61 or 78% retracement, that would really be an interesting one from the long side because it would certainly be uh, very, very interesting. Uh, my goodness, uh, Mr. Z, is the, are the hogs up again today, Limit Up? Oh, dear. 
we got out of that one a little bit, bit too soon. You talk about leaving money on the table, shut the front door and raise the rent. Let's look at that because here uh, you think, uh, sometimes you think you know these markets and you don't, but I'll just bring this up here. We'll show you the June hogs here. Oh my goodness, shut the front door and raise the rent. It was up two days in a row here and uh, we'll be able to see here. We exploded. Now, when we went through that uh, 80, uh, 81 and change level, which was, we bought it at 73. We bought June hogs at 73, and we got out of them at 80, uh, 80, 55. Now, we made seven points, and then the next two days, limit up each day, three points, left six points on the table. And, uh, hey, hey, you know, you have a choice that you can uh, take part of your position off or you can take it all off. All I was doing was looking at the amount of money that we had made in a very, very short period of time, and I had to make a decision of whether to keep my uh, uh, position or to take profits or raise the stop, and I have to make that decision, and uh, I did. That one was wrong, but you know it still made good money, but look at the money that I left on the table. Remember those four fears that everybody works works about those those fears that are not even fears you know the fear of uh, being wrong the fear of losing money you do that all the time that's what trading is all about the fear of missing out and then last one the fear of leaving money on the table that's the silliest fear of all folks because the only person that doesn't leave money on the table is the person that gets the absolute low or high tick and his name is Tom O'Brien now, I don't know who does that, but very few people, you know, get the high or low tick. You know, I've been I've put thousands of trades on over the past 57 years, and I've hit the highs and lows, but it doesn't mean anything. When you look at your equity run, you know, uh, they don't even have those anymore, but when you look at your equity, you can see that, oh, gee, it doesn't have an asterisk there. Say, wow, this is the high of the day. This is the low of the day. It doesn't mean anything. So it's all about the risk control. It's not about the money you make. It's about the money you don't lose. And once you do that, you're going to be far better off than if you, uh, you know, try to figure out. I wonder what's happened to Norm. Son of a gun, I'm, I'm a little worried about him because he's never off, off uh, track. So, we'll see. Hmm. All right, we're going to come up here. We got another break. I wanted to cover another uh, one of the futures markets that we're looking at because it's another idea of uh, the things that are interesting, and that is in the heating oil market. I wanted to bring this up to you, and uh, I'll show you the daily heating oil here at the 50% retracement level, but uh, when we get back, uh, <laughs> I think you're right. I think he's been uh, he's been abducted by aliens, probably from the fan planet Venus. Maria, you're right. Welcome back, Maria. We've missed you. 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying Diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, 
the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, I'm back, folks. I posted the chart of the heating oil, which is you know, one of the components of the crude oil uh, uh, crack, uh, cracking the uh, crude oil into products of heating oil and gasoline and you'll notice the heating oil has been going down and the uh, gas um, crude, crude oil has been going up heating oil has been going down and that's it that brings to to the remember you want to sell the weakest contract and buy the strongest that's out of livermore's book reminiscences of a stock operator but if you'll take a look at this here you'll be able to see here that you see the three drive or the one three five pattern lower tops now remember we're making higher tops in, in the crude oil so that's why we need to watch that 95 level very very closely in the crude oil because if it takes that out and doesn't go anywhere that's an extremely low risk trade because you're dealing with a contract that's worth $59,000 and you can trade it for just, you know, probably around 400 bucks. So that's the ideal situation if we get that. We've had a request to uh, take a look at uh, copper and we will, but I need to do the euro because I said I was going to and I haven't been able to do it. Let's get this up here to take a quick look at it. Here's where we were Friday. <laughs> okay, I'll do that, Mr. Z. You'll notice here in the euro, we got up to uh, 13, 113.55 last night, and we took out the highs of Friday by a little bit. We're now trading at 113.44. Haven't really done anything. I'm watching for a 382 pullback in here because uh, this has got a real chance uh, to have a, something really big happen. You need to know what that first retracement is, folks, and because if it only is a 382 retracement, which would at this point would be down uh, 80 pips from the high, that would really be an interesting one because you right at a 382 really strong possibility that that three drive to a bottom pattern from january through march is very very important and especially since you'll look at that low price down there 111.75 that was the exact to the tick 61 percent retracement from uh, several years ago and here again you took out those lows by seven or eight pips and the market went nowhere. And then look at snapback, and it's rallied over uh, 170 pips without uh, hardly any any trouble at all. So uh, watch that very closely here in the crude. If we get down to that real key level at 112.80, anything below 112.80, you know the jury is still going to be out. They're going to have to have more time to consider what's going to happen. But right now, watch that closely. That'll be a 382 retracement. And if it does it, and if it does it in ABCD format, then you'll be able to look at it. Okay. Uh, okay. Someone here it says, if Norm does not show up, would you be okay to post his page with the upcoming events? Uh, yeah, I think I could do that. Uh, yeah, I can do that. I'll do that right after the. I'll do that. I'll post that uh, upcoming events page for you folks. Okay, so this is highly. We've we've had Norm on now for four years. This is the first curtain call that he's missed, so let's uh, 
let's hope that he's okay. I, I, I chatted with him this morning by Skype, so I know he's all right. Well, he was at the time, but as we know, things change in the world of uh, this and that. All right, let's get this copper up, then we'll take a quick look at it here. Here's another situation where copper has had a uh, two-week correction and can't even make a 382 uh, move down, folks. So this is a, it's a very, very interesting here in the copper. Let's get this up here, take a quick look at this here. All righty, there's the... Uh, there's the copper. You'll see we made a 50% retracement here two weeks ago. Uh, we're now down uh, two weeks. Uh, we've not been able to correct any more from 297 down to uh, 288. We've made that double bottom there. We're trading at 292 right now. There will be some pretty strong resistance, I believe, up around the 61% retracement, which is around $3 a pound. So that's an interesting one to watch too. But we did have a beautiful double bottom here again, folks. If you know, this is just one example after another. Look at this example here. We make a low in August of 255, right? Then we make a ABCD pattern and make a new low at what 253 and a half? Are you kidding me? A contract that's worth uh, what 50, what 20 thousand dollars, and it makes a lower low by. By 100 bucks. I mean, there was no buy, no, no selling there at all. And look what happened. The market exploded. It, it rallied 10 cents a pound before you even had a chance to get in. So watch those old highs and lows. They're there for a reason. It's just supply and demand, but that's what you're looking at when you're watching some of these things. So, uh, you know, this has been a 10 day correction in copper, hasn't gone anywhere. That's certainly not a bearish pattern, folks. There's no, I mean, it's downtrend, of course but uh, has no sell-off. I mean, it really hasn't, uh, given the fact that it had that, uh, you know, big move up from one uh, from 254 up to uh, 297. It's backed off very, very little. The 382 on that brings you down to around 282. So there's 10 cents support lower in copper from where it's trading right now, which is uh, 292. So I hope that helps. We'll keep a close eye on it, if nothing else, as we always do with these things. So we'll watch it here. We've got a brand new high, recovery high. We're not in a new high ground yet, but we just made a new recovery high up here at uh, 2838 here in the E-mini S&P. It's acting relatively well. Gold continues to move down. We got down to 1304 uh, in the gold. The high has been 1306.10. And then we'll see what's going on here uh, with that. The bonds. Uh, we have a lot of re a lot of resistance at 146.18, but uh, that's pretty much what we're looking at right here. We've got Mr. Z on the line. What can I help you with, my friend? Mr. Pezzavento, I thought I would ask you a question about real-time markets, okay. and uh, and draw upon and ask you to draw upon some historical experience you have had dating back into the uh, 80s, beat 82 and 83. Specifically, Larry, I <clears throat> uh, wanted to ask if you would comment uh, the on the Live Hog Futures uh, contracts. Uh, as you showed in your daily chart just posted, the uh, the June Hog contract has surged over, I guess, be the, the last nine trading days. And... Um, just for to put some meat on the bones, the prior contract high for that that June contract was 85.5 cents, and that was made last Thanksgiving or so. And mm -hmm. the rally that has occurred the past three days came from well under that level, extended over that for the first time on a closing basis just Friday, which was limit up at 86.5. And then this morning, as is not unusual with a limit up market, uh, this morning's open at 9.30 a.m. was higher. But uh, after opening higher and the high up at 88.8 .8 cents occurring in the first minutes, we are now three cents under. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so clearly there's some group of players were ready there to sell. And I've heard you comment, Larry, over the years listening to you here on TFNN. I've heard you talk of situations you were intimately involved with, whether it was soybeans or pork bellies or something, where markets had gone up and up and up, and the news was bullish, 
And then the price action didn't respond to the bullish news. So my question is, can you just share uh, share with us? I'd like to listen to you just kind of freewheel it um, regarding this opening high and now down three cents on the June sure. hogs and what that might portend. <laughs> I will bring that up right after the break. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we'd been talking with Mr. Z from our Tiger Den here in Philadelphia, and we were talking about the fact that the hogs were limit up two days. They were close limit up on Friday. They opened slightly higher today and then broke three cents, which is over $1,000. The only way you can take advantage of that, folks, is to see what the opening call was. You can get that from your from your machines. It'll give you an idea where the bids are. And if it's only up a little bit, it might have been called two cents higher. And if it op only opens up, you know, point eight cents or 0.2 cents that telling you there's no buying there and then when the market reverses you better have your order in there because you know too many people have been long and now they could be trapped from the short side we don't know that but in order to take advantage of that the only way you can do it is to be prepared for it by watching what the tape is going to do because it could have opened a dollar and a half to two dollars or even three dollars higher because of the fact that it was limit up but when it doesn't do that then you have an idea that whoa there was not a lot of buying there and then you can see what happened it broke well over a thousand dollars 
in a matter of a few minutes. So I will find out uh, what's wrong with uh, Norm. I'm sure I will. I hope I will anyway. And we'll try to post uh, the key times that he was looking at for today and tomorrow. Maybe we'll have him on uh, Friday of this week and uh, see if we can get him on then if we possibly can. But I'll do my best to track it out. Highly unusual that he didn't make the call this morning. Keep an eye on three things, folks. The euro, if we get above that 113.70, that's very, very bullish. Keep an eye on the crude oil at $59 a barrel. And also keep an eye on that gold, because if gold can get above 13, uh, 1309, it's got a really good chance to complete that ABCD Gartley that's up there around 1317. Also, the S&P, if we make new highs and don't go anywhere, then that's a possibility of a, you know, a market uh, moving. Uh, right now, we're, we did we got up to 13, excuse me, 2338. So it's still going higher. Nothing to do there, but. Uh, uh, the three that I'm watching, of course, are the euro, the crude oil, and the gold. Those are the ones I think offer the best. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.